Alright, good morning everyone. Good morning. Or good afternoon. <laughs> Jan, do you want this? I do. This it's this it's vibrating. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Okay. <laughs> 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 You're skipping a sexy salad, Marlo. So I'll tell you guys about that later. So my name is John James. I'm the managing partner of Ignited Results, and we are a full-service digital marketing firm located here in Reno. So what we do is we specialize in helping you increase your leads and generate sales using LinkedIn. Now, I'd like to begin by asking you guys to consider a new paradigm, a new way of thinking about your social media network. I'd like you to consider the paradigm that your social media network has real value. Value that increases over time, just like a regular asset. No different than a piece of rental property. So just like rental property, when properly managed, will increase in value over the time and provide monthly income to you, the same thing can happen with your social media network when managed properly. It can produce a monthly income for you in terms of new clients and new referrals. Does this make sense? This is something I am very passionate about. In fact, I write about this all the time. Um, in your blue pamphlet there, there's an article that I wrote three weeks ago for Forbes. Now the reason I'm sharing the article with you that I wrote for Forbes.com is because it goes to the heart of today's discussion. You can reference the article later on and it's going to give you some ideas when you combine it with the information that you learned today about how you can create an unstoppable supply of leads and build relationships using LinkedIn. Okay? So at the end of my short talk, I'm going to invite you guys to go out to the back table, meet with Jan or Lori, and book a one-on-one -on -one consultation so that we can get together. It's a real consultation, it's very strategic. We're going to look at creating a lead generation blueprint for LinkedIn, for you guys to use LinkedIn. Make sense? Okay, everybody ready? Okay, let's go to the next one. So let's take a look at our overview and discuss how you can build an unstoppable flow of leads using LinkedIn. Let's go. So this is our overview. I'm going to have you guys out in time uh, so that you can make the next session. So for about the next 30 minutes, maybe 35 minutes, here's what we're going to discuss. Social selling. Who's heard of social selling? Three people. Okay, four people. So social selling is a newer tactic being discussed, or a newer strategy, I should say, being discussed in the social atmosphere. Even in today's um, main session downstairs, I noticed that social media was discussed without LinkedIn. You see, LinkedIn is the sleeping giant of social media. Most of you think of what when you think of social media? Facebook, Facebook right. But in terms of business to business connections, LinkedIn is where it's at. I'm gonna go into some details about this in just a bit. Oh, let's back up one, Jen. There you go, okay. We're gonna talk about the power of your professional versus your personal relationships and how to increase the value of your network. And I'll get into a bunch more things. How to cultivate your network, which is probably the biggest and most important part of today's topic, is not just having a social media network, but actually cultivating that network and creating relationships, okay? All right, go forward one, please. So I've been featured on ABC, CBS, NBC, and Fox News sites. I write regularly for Forbes. Forbes has what they call uh, the Forbes Agency Council, meaning they take the top digital marketers from around the world and they invite you into the Forbes Agency Council. And then with that, I write for Forbes usually about weekly. So uh, if you Google John James and Ignited Results and you click on news at the top of the search results, you'll see a bunch of those articles there um, in addition to the one in, in your chair. Okay. So four rules of the day. Number one, let's have fun. Two, I'll give you 100%, please give me the same. 
Three, let's be interactive. And four, I need you guys to promise to take action. Deal? Yeah. Okay, now when I say take action, I mean the information that I give you today is twofold. You can take it and use it and implement it on your own. Okay, I do my best to give you that much information that you can take things home that are actionable and you can use it on your own. In addition to that, I'll go into a little bit of detail about our done for you service if you want someone to manage your network for you properly. Either one is fine, but take action, okay? So let's do our first test. One or two of you have seen me play this game before. <laughs> Jim's already getting ready. He just knows, you know? He just, he just, he just knows. So this is, this is a $20 bill, okay? This $20 bill goes to the first woman or man who will exchange this with me for $1. Wow, that, Gail, I love it. That is the, that is the fastest ever. <laughs> that is the fastest ever. She, I was going to do it, but I wanted everyone to see the message. Right, right. Well, you know. I get the message? Maybe not. She just enhanced her results, you know. But hey, I'll tell you. The point of doing that, though, is that when we see that, because I saw like the look on about four people's faces around the back, you know, and it's kind of like, or everyone, you know, we go, is it too good to be true? Is it real? Is he serious? You know, and we're analyzing, you know, and then there's another third of the group that says, well, yeah, you know, and they're looking for the money. And then there's a, th the other third of the group that goes, oh, I got this dollar, but should I? And then boom, someone else just seizes the moment, okay? So the point is, when you recognize opportunity, seize it. What do you have to lose? What do you have to lose by giving an effort? Absolutely nothing, right? Okay, so please keep that in mind. There are so many opportunities. I got two emails today, one, another one from Randy and our client Tim, blew me away about the relationships they are developing through our system on LinkedIn and the actual money that it's putting in their pocket, okay? Uh, for those of you that saw me speak yesterday afternoon, you saw one of our clients here. She's an ambassador. She spoke about her results where we've tripled her revenues in, well, about 93 days now, okay? So the stuff works. All right, let's continue. So can one connection triple your revenue? Is it possible? One connection on LinkedIn. Okay. Let's go forward one, please. This is Dr. Aaron Oxel, or excuse me, Aaron Ox Oxel. I try to say it the way she does. She is a psychologist and a peak performance coach. She actually coaches a lot of real estate agents. And Aaron met one person on LinkedIn, one person. This lady was on the board of, I forget what it was, a very important person. And long story short, she referred Aaron to the right person who Aaron now speaks around the nation, coaching real estate professionals in peak performance. She is now a best-selling author. Last year, she won Saleswoman of the Year for the state of Nevada. All of this came from a single connection on LinkedIn. I can tell you a dozen stories. I can take the next 30 minutes and tell you 12 more stories just like that, okay? So if you guys aren't utilizing LinkedIn and leveraging it properly, then you're missing out, okay? Make sense? All right. So Dr. Aaron, before LinkedIn, she developed her relationships the old way. Now she's using the new way, which is what we call social selling. Okay, how many of you guys want the new way? Okay, I'm just making sure you're awake. Let's go forward. So before I go into the new way, I wanna tell you the old way because I want you to be able to clearly distinguish between what you're doing now and if it's the old way before we elaborate on the new way. Make sense? Okay, so here's the old way. Friends and family, 
that's the old way to build relationships or rely on like those people for referrals, right? We all do it when we first start out, but how far can that take you? Okay, next one, pay-per-click ads. Pay-per-click ads on Google or Facebook can be effective. I am not saying that they do not work, because they do. However, in your industry, anything related to real estate or around real estate is so competitive that it becomes very costly to run a pay-per-click campaign on Google. Does that make sense? Okay. Number three, BNI meetings. This guy right here doesn't get up at 6 a.m. for breakfast meetings. It's not gonna happen, okay? It can be effective too, but that's the old way. There is an easier way to do things, okay? And then finally, cold calling. I've got a buddy in New York, he's a cold calling beast. The guy is a machine, all right? But there's an easier way. There's an easier way. Okay, so our system, builds your authority on LinkedIn and magnetic pipeline. Authority is first. I'm going to elaborate on that in just a second. But you have to position yourself as an authority before you start doing any marketing. In fact, you should just go ahead and write that down now if you're taking notes. You should position yourself as an authority <coughs> before you start doing any marketing whatsoever. Okay. I'll tell you why in just a second. Authority positioning combines perfectly with social selling. Now social selling is the new way. Social selling is how Erin became a best-selling author, 10x her revenues, and now she's speaking around the country. Social selling is basically when you're on LinkedIn, you're connecting with people, you're sharing information, you're nurturing that lead by sending them useful information over time, and then finally, you change the environment so that they meet with you in person, or over the phone, or online for a video chat, or they show up for a seminar or a webinar, okay? <laughs> Sky's the limit, I'm gonna give you guys some, some ideas for events that we didn't have time to go into on yesterday. Sound good? Yes. Okay. All right. Let's go forward. <clears throat> so why LinkedIn? Okay. When it comes to social selling, you want to be using LinkedIn. 80% of all business to business leads now originate off of LinkedIn. That is a fact. Your top business to business marketers only use LinkedIn. 41% of millionaires are on LinkedIn. And on LinkedIn, people will talk to you. They want to have a business conversation with you on LinkedIn. Okay, that's why it's so powerful. So we're gonna talk about how to spruce up your profi profile, build your authority on LinkedIn, and then start social selling. Make sense? Okay, let's go forward. So I want you to write this down because this will sum up the heart of today and then we'll revisit this a little bit later. These are what I call the three ABCs of LinkedIn. Number one, always be connecting. Always be connecting. Number two, always be cultivating. And number three, always be closing. But it happens in that order. First you connect, then you cultivate the relationship. From relationships, sales automatically come. From the relationship, <coughs> referrals automatically come to you, right? What's the best source of business? <laughs> referrals, right? But referrals are not really a source of business. They're the best type of business to have, you're right. But referrals come from relationships. And this is what I have to do my darndest, bestest today to drive home to you is I challenge you to use social media to build relationships because those relationships will increase your income. 
Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. The three secrets to building an unstoppable flow of leads. Step number one, position yourself as an influencer. Number two, cultivate relationships. Number three, targeted lead generation. Targeted lead generation. So let's go forward and look at these in, in a little bit of detail. Number one, authority positioning. Go forward one, please. Here's what we mean. To position yourself as an authority, you need a client-facing profile. Okay, so your profile on LinkedIn, when was the last time you updated it? <laughs> 10 years ago? Ooh, that's honest. Oh, that hurt. Who else? Never. Never? Okay. When so, when you created it. Yeah. Okay. So see, people think of LinkedIn as like an online resume. It's not that anymore, especially since Microsoft bought LinkedIn. Okay? It's not just an online CV or resume. LinkedIn is a social selling tool. So your profile should be client facing. What that means is that your photo should be professional. Your banner image should not be that typical LinkedIn blue. You know, just that plain blue image. It shouldn't be that. If you change that image alone to something that speaks to your field and your authority, your engagement on LinkedIn increases 23%. A proper headshot, another 21%. Then you spruce up the summary, now you're over the 40 percentile in terms of getting people to engage with you. Your headline message, this is something we cover in our one-on-one -on -one sessions, okay? Your headline message, it should talk about how you help the client. That's what we mean by client facing. I'll give you an example. I have a client here in Reno. Well, he's in Carson City. His name is Jock. He's a real estate agent. He's doing really well. We started his campaign on LinkedIn. It took less than one month. And Jock said, you know what? I'm getting a lot of leads really quick. And he said, but it's week three. I didn't necessarily get a sale, but I got a new renter. And that renter should turn into a sale in about a year, but he's referred me to someone who wants to buy property. This happened in three weeks. Okay? So, but his profile, here's my point about a client facing profile. His headline said, I help engineers buy real estate. That's client facing. He chose a niche market, engineers. Who's your niche market, okay? On your yellow sheets of paper, it asks you to identify who your target market is. I'd love for you to write that down before you leave here today. Who's your target market? You should be thinking about your target market because it might seem counterintuitive for a jock to outline only engineers because you might think, well, God, you know, is he selling real estate to anyone else? Of course. He still has a license, they're not going to walk away. But by him identifying engineers, guess what? Right downtown, right there, uh, in one of the hotels, there are 2,000 people living there who can't find a house because they work at Tesla. Tesla's brought in all these engineers. Guess who they're talking to? They're talking to the local real estate agent who specializes in helping engineers. Brilliant. This came out of our strategy session. That's why I'm saying today, really take capital from this conversation and book your strategy sessions when this is over. Let's go forward one. Publishing articles on LinkedIn. This makes you an instant authority. LinkedIn has what they call LinkedIn news. You write an article, pop it in there. All of your connections get a message. It says, What's your name, sir? David. It says David was featured in LinkedIn News. It says your connection was in the news today. Okay? Now, when your followers or your connections see this month in and month out, does this build your influence? Absolutely. Does it build your authority? Let me, sh let me, let me explain what I'm talking about. Let's, let's look at it like this. So this is a $100 bill. 
<laughs> oh geez, that's what okay, that's what everyone okay. So do I have who has a one? I'm not exchanging it, I just wanna know. I just need some help for the example. Who has a one? I'll, I'll come to you. I'll take the 20, the 4, okay, okay, <laughs> thank you. So, $1 bill, $100 bill, okay? Now, what's the difference? I mean, they're roughly the same color, okay? They weigh the same, right? They kind of even smell the same, right? You say one's worth more, right? Mm -hmm. Zeros, right? The difference is only the branding. The package, right? One has far more influence than the other. Is this true? Yes. Yes. So, instead of just being the real estate agent or the insurance agent or the whatever who is like everyone else, you have to package yourself to have more value to the people that are connected to you. Does this make sense? Okay. You do this through articles and you do this through creating your own group inside of LinkedIn. Let's go to the next slide. Thank you. You want this one? I'll give it to you later. <laughs> So here's how you create instant influence, right? Here's how you stand out from the other people that are in your field. Go on LinkedIn, and this is a big deal because we usually only talk about this in paid workshops, like workshops where people are spending 1500 bucks, you know, and we're just diving in really deep. Create your own group on LinkedIn. The second you go inside of LinkedIn and you create a group, what happens is you have automatic influence. You have instant influence with the people you're connected to. Because when a connection request goes to these people, what they see is, okay, so Leilani is the founder of XYZ Group on LinkedIn. She's not trying to just, she's not trying to sell me something. She's the founder of a group. She's probably got information that's valuable to me. Does this make sense? Okay, so please turn to your neighbor for 30 seconds before we go to the next section and share what you've learned so far. <coughs> One thirteen. Okay. I don't know what mine would be. I'm still thinking about it. Your group? Yeah, like what I would sell, like your, well, whatever guy, John. We'll come up with. It will come up with one. But first, I need to change my broker. <laughs> okay. Oh, don't let us get to it. No, let us get to it. No, I want you to get to it. I am not good at doing this, so I'm just like, that's, that's what I want to talk about. Yeah. I'll come up with the group name. I'll ask you like 40 questions and then we'll have everything that we need. You all right, Jim? I love, oh, I love that. Okay. I actually, I actually woke up thinking about some of the stories you told me yesterday. You, you blew my mind. You really did. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. When we get together, we'll really... Right. Oh my goodness. Oh wow. Okay, so when when you get a hold of this, I can't even imagine. Okay, everyone ready? All right. Anyone want to share anything? 
Right. Yes. Right. So my name is Cam Grant, this is Oscar, um, and I'm a loan officer, Oscar is in inspections. And both of us have a common um, realization that LinkedIn isn't a resume source where, you know, a lot of people are going to, recruiters um, in particular, are going to be scouting to hire. Um, we both have a common goal that we just learned that we want to increase our social media footprint. Nice. Um, he just created uh, Instagram. He okay. also been on LinkedIn okay. recently. Okay. I don't have a LinkedIn and I will get one now. Okay, good. Um, I do have Instagram and about okay. a month and a half ago I created a Facebook. Nice. Nice. And you're both loan officers? No, he's no, in I'm inspections. Full inspections. Got it. Okay. Got it. Awesome. Okay. Anyone else? Leilani. Talish shared that um, you know someone should I quote the book? Yeah. Uh, but you have the way. Okay. Uh, although I'm sent you time. I was like, okay. Um, he only uses Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. Okay. Because I was ready to do all the cold calling I need to do. Mm -hmm. And he does it apparently, so maybe Yeah, he help Yeah, he does it through social. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. All right, let's go forward. This is my favorite section. This, this is what I wrote about in that Forbes article. This is like my favorite part. It's the most important part, even though I already said that about another part, but still. <laughs> Maybe the other part was the most important and this is my favorite, okay? <laughs> Cultivating your relationships. So let's go forward one. When you're connected to people on LinkedIn, especially if you're in any type of industry where you're selling something, you want to cultivate the relationship. You need to make the connection and then through a series of targeted messages, you're cultivating the relationship by changing the environment from the social atmosphere to being connected in real life. So we have coffee, video chat, one-on-one -on -one lunches, if you're holding seminars, I don't, you know, it could be first time home buyer seminars, um, 1031 exchange seminars, whatever the case may be, how to stage your home for sale, you know, different workshops. You want to cultivate those connections in the real world, okay? Now, there was one guy, I'll tell you a quick story. Um, he wrote a book called Never Eat Alone. In the book, he talks about when he was a younger guy in New York, in Manhattan, he had a small apartment, okay? And every Thursday, he would have folks over for dinner. Four of them he knew, five or six were just random people. What happened was, he would do this every Thursday, he got to know more and more people, his influence got stronger. He was kind of broke in the beginning and he didn't know how to cook, so he would just have like pasta and meat sauce and a couple of people would bring wine. That one strategy he leveraged into what is today a $100 million consultancy. Okay, so I'm not saying it doesn't take work. We can create the re we can generate the leads, we can target the market, we can do all the messaging, like we do that ex ex extremely well. We can do all of that, but then you gotta put in the work and actually cultivate these relationships, okay? So it does take some work, but it pays off handsomely. Sometimes the work is limited to just having a telephone meeting and talking to somebody. Okay? But we create the environment so that you're in that situation to take advantage of those opportunities. Is there... Who, who asked Cam? Was that you? Okay. Sexy... That... Wow. You know, so that seems to be the question that people want to know about sexy salad. Just yesterday and today, though, it might be your industry. <laughs> Because nowhere else, they're like, oh yeah, coffee. You know, how do we do coffee? So, Sexy Salad is, um, the first one I went to was in Oakland. And there's a long conference table. And the Oakland Impact Hub is a business hub. So they invite all these business owners out. And you stand around the table. Uh, the host, which would be you, provides all the lettuce and the bowls, right? All the guests show up and they provide the fixings. The tomatoes, the cucumbers, the walnuts, chicken, raisins, whatever, right? They provide the fixings. 
and you can bless the meal or not they did like a Native American kind of ritual before everyone started eating it was a lot of fun and if you're the host you give a two-minute spiel and everyone breaks bread it's beautiful when you actually see it in action and experience it it is so beautiful in your businesses does this make sense is this something you'd consider doing is this something that you could see that would actually turn into real relationships that convert to dollars and cents? Does this make sense to you? Okay. I know it does because it works, you know, and I would bet you there's no one in your backyard doing it. But I would bet you that if you did it month in and month out for a year, oh, come on. And who do you invite? You invite people, and I'm jumping ahead a little bit because this goes into the targeted marketing, but you invite people that can be sources of referral for you. Invite business brokers or inspectors or carpet cleaning people. I have a carpet cleaning client who refers tons of business to real estate agents, okay? Invite CPAs. Different people that are in non-competing businesses, but they're parallel and they can refer leads to you. That's who you invite. And you engage these people monthly using any one of these strategies. You're gonna win, you're gonna win. You'll be here next year and you'll be the people saying, oh, social media does work. I actually can look at my network, watch it grow daily, and I know that from X amount of new connections is gonna come X amount of people at my event and then X amount of deals. It is quantifiable. It is an asset if you manage it properly. Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, next one. On your yellow sheets, write down your target market at the top, please. In the middle section, please write down what point B would be. Now what we mean by point B is any of the things on the previous slide. For example, you might invite people to a lunch and learn, a sexy salad, it could be coffee, but write down what you think point B should be for your market, okay? And writing something down is the beginning of creating any reality. So you're here, you may as well take the time to really focus inside of your business. So, quick show of hands or just a little bit of feedback, what do you think point B would be for you? Yes? Uh, actually, vendors and like merchants locally. That okay, so you would connect to vendors and merchants. And what's going to be, let's go back one slide. What's going to be your point B, your cultivation strategy? Coffee, lunch, sexy salad? Coffee. Coffee? Okay. Lunch, okay. I'll tell you a super quick story. Um, 33? 23, okay. So we're, we're moving along. I'll tell you a super quick story. Um, there's a book called Ask by Ryan Levesque. And in the book, he talks about, he tells a story about a young kid who graduated Stanford. He goes a year without employment. He goes on a LinkedIn and he says, hey, I see we both went to Stanford. And I see that we both live in San Francisco. Would you like to get together for coffee to see how we can edify each other's network? In one month, he had 25 coffee appointments. And he got 85 job offers. Can you do the same thing for your business? You know, all you have to do is connect with the right market. All right, let's go forward. Targeted prospecting. Now, in the example I just gave, the gentleman who was using the coffee strategy as point B, in his case, he, he did a strategy that we call the mutual affiliation or the mutual, he said, hey, I see we both went to Stanford, right? I see we both live in San Francisco. Okay, there's so many different ways to play with your messaging. When we do our one-on-one -on -one session together, we're gonna explore what your messaging should be and who you have affinity to, who your niche markets are, et cetera, so that we laser target like a Navy SEAL. Does this make sense? Okay. 
So targeted prospecting. This is the meat of it right here. Identify your target market. You can do it based on affinity, niche, or referral potential. That's what I recommend to business owners. Target based on affinity, niche, or referral potential. You wanna send out about five to 12 messages on LinkedIn. Spread them three weeks apart. That's how you get the highest engagement. 27% increase in engagement. Spreading the messages out three weeks or so apart. Okay, not Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, they don't do that. They'll, they'll disconnect, okay, spread them out. And then finally, invite them to meet with you in the real world. That could be phone, video chat. We have one client in Singapore. And so point B for her is a video cup of coffee, a virtual cup of coffee. She gets on Zoom, she does a video chat, they literally sit there and have coffee, you know, and she's on the other side of the world. But she's killing it through LinkedIn, okay? All right, let's go forward. You're gonna need Sales Navigator. If you haven't heard of Sales Navigator, go into your LinkedIn account. At the top, you just click on Solutions and purchase Sales Navigator. That is the, this is the tool that you need in order to do all of the hyper-targeting. Sales Navigator. Can you explain Yes, so in Sales Navigator, you can target people based on um, net worth, income, gender, industry. Um, there's over 100 different verticals and different ways that you can target. Okay? It's a very powerful tool. You can track your leads, very powerful. So you're going to need Sales Navigator to be very effective at social selling. How much does it cost? Uh, I believe now it's uh, 65 monthly. Okay, worth, worth its weight in gold. And please, be fearless about investing in your business. I mean, be fearless about it. Okay, because if you're doing it properly, you're going to have a return on investment. Make sense? Okay. Next. So this is our framework for our messaging system. I usually don't give this away. I don't usually put it on a slide. But initially, we're sending out a connection request, followed by a thank you. After we thank them, we send information that's useful to them. Then we share an article that we created for you guys, or you would share an article that you created for yourself, okay? After that, now you've, you've nurtured that prospect, now you're ready to invite them to cultivate to a one-on-one -on -one session. Does that make sense? That's the sequence. That's very effective. Okay, any questions? Okay. Super quick 30 seconds. I want you to share where we are because we just finished three sections. Share what you've learned, please, with your neighbor. That way it sticks. And then we'll go forward. <laughs> we have until 45. Chris? Chris? Nice. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Everybody learning something? 
Okay. Is this is this information is it beneficial? Okay. All right. You guys ready? And if you haven't written down your target market um, and how you're going to cultivate the target market, what point B is? Um, please do that as well as as we wrap up over the next ten minutes. Okay. Let's go forward one. This is Steven Anderson, just to drive the point home a bit further. I like the story. This just happened last Thursday. Um, Steve, <laughs> Steve had um, initially, uh, well, I won't say this part on Well, darn it. Sorry, Steve. <laughs> no, he doesn't care. But initially, Steve, you know, he was kind of like, geez, who are all these people? Why am I getting so many connections? I'm like, well, man, that's the point. You know, he's like, well, people want to talk to me. <laughs> I'm like, well, yeah, you know, that's that's the point, you know. So uh, we kind of revisited the foundation, and then it was like, oh, okay, I, that's right, I remember, I get it. So last Thursday, a bankruptcy attorney flew in from Vegas here to meet with Steve, and they put together a referral uh, arrangement. Okay, so. Oh, I love that. Yeah. And a divorce. Divorce attorneys, right? Uh, I believe it's a bankruptcy attorney. But a divorce probably even better. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. She just found her target now. Right. <laughs> Actually, that would. That would. Red. Red. Did you guys go to Red? Yeah. Yeah. Yesterday, he was talking about, you know, it's yeah. bad, but... It Actually, no, that actually is a very, very effective target market because we can just connect you with, imagine having coffee with three divorce attorneys a week. Okay, that's my idea. Nobody else use it. So, okay. Now, it does, you're going to have coffee with folks, right? You're going to have lunches. It requires an investment. Money's disposable. It just circulates. You don't really spend money. Jim knows this. You just circulate money right it can't be spent it just circulates so don't be afraid to put it into your business let's go forward that's the case can I see your hundred dollar bill again yeah let's circulate that <laughs> let's circulate it absolutely right right <laughs> yeah just circulate it all the way back around until it's like 200 when it comes back here so here's what we've covered this past hour. We've talked about how your social media network is a real asset. We've talked about how to increase the value of your network, targeted prospecting on LinkedIn, <coughs> establishing yourself as an authority before you start marketing, okay? Cultivating the relationships so that you generate leads and actual referrals and new sales, okay? That's what we've covered so far. A good use of your time today? Yes. Okay. Yes. Let's go forward. Um, if it's okay, what I did for this session was I put together a special offer that you guys can take advantage of today or just lock it in for the future. Okay. Is it okay if we go over that for about five minutes? Okay. Uh, one more. So here's what's included with our social selling service. So we start with a one hour strategy session. It's a real strategy session. We're gonna talk about different markets you have affinity to, how to position you as an individual and make you an actual influencer, okay? We'll talk about who to target on LinkedIn and what your point B is going to be. Okay, how you're going to cultivate that relationship. We set up your entire foundation inside of Sales Navigator with all of your lead generated lists, etc. We brainstorm 10 article topics, 10 article topics. That way my team populates an editorial calendar for the next two or three quarters. And you know, you know, um, when your articles are going to be published, okay? After that, we create a, uh, a client-facing LinkedIn profile. My writers, we have 12 content writers, they will rewrite your profile um, to make it, you know, kind of pop, right? Give it some punch, okay? Make sure it's client-facing. They will also rewrite the headline message. After that, we join you into three or five targeted groups. 
because just by joining groups can also help you establish influence. And then after that, we actually um, create your own, well actually, after that we write your articles. Um, your articles are what position you as an authority. We're publishing articles on a monthly basis for some of our clients that are, um, you know, we, we publish once a week, it just depends. But in general, it's once a month. And we'll go for it one more. Here's the big one. What we do is, if you, you heard Randy yesterday, she gave a testimonial about us. What we do is we reach out to 35 to 50 of your targeted prospects daily. Daily. We literally inbox daily through LinkedIn. Okay? That is a very big deal. That's like someone doing 35 to 50 virtual sales calls a day, just connecting you with those target markets. And then when you're connected, of course, we start sending out the messaging sequences that take them from point A to point B, meeting with you. Make sense? We're going to publish you guys. We're going to do a news release so that on ABC, CBS, NBC, and Fox news sites, we'll do a news release, those articles will show up on those sites. Whenever we do that, you get a distribution report, it'll have about anywhere from two to 400 news sites across the country who ran the story, and you can literally click through the report on various channels to see the site. Okay, sound good? It's a lot of value. Next one. One more. So let's run through this one last time and then we'll uh, num oh, all the way down. Uh, discovery session, your foundational setup. We do the articles, we create the editorial calendar, then we start publishing articles each month. You have the bonuses where we create the leadership platform and the ABC, CBS, NBC, and Fox. Is this something you guys are interested in? Is it? Okay, good. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much, Randy. Randy is a brand ambassador. She's a happy client. So thank you for taking the time to drive up from Carson City and welcome everyone. So as Randy said, my name is John James. I am the managing partner of Ignited Results. We are a full service digital marketing firm headquartered here in Reno. We specialize in showing you how to increase leads and generate sales using LinkedIn. At the end of my short talk, I'm gonna invite you guys to go to the back tables and schedule a free consultation so that we can create a LinkedIn lead generation blueprint so that you can begin experiencing what we call an unstoppable business. Sound good? Real. <laughs> So I'd like to begin by asking you to consider a new paradigm or a new way of thinking. And that is, your social media network is a real asset. No different than a piece of rental income. And just like a piece of rental property, if you manage this asset properly, it will increase in value and provide a steady flow of leads, new clients, and referrals. Does this make sense? Okay. So let's take a look at our overview so that we can see how you can build an unstoppable flow of leads. I'm going to be explaining what social selling is, why it's so effective. It is the latest, newest thing in social media. However, it's been around for a couple years now. It's very powerful. So I'm going to talk about social selling and how you can implement it in your business. I'm going to talk about the power of personal relationships. This is something I'm really big on. In your pamphlets in front of you, there's an article from Forbes.com. I wrote this article for Forbes about three weeks ago. In that article, I talk about the power of really creating and cultivating your relationships in the real world with your social media following. This is something I'm a firm believer in. In fact, I believe your net worth is a result of your network. And so the reason I wrote that article for Forbes and I want to share it with you is because if you read it later on in your spare time and you think about it and combine it with the information in this session, you should get a lot of ideas about how to increase the value of your network. Make sense? Okay. So 
So a little bit about my ABC, CBS, NBC, Fox News sites. I actually write for Forbes on a regular basis, uh, usually about once a week. And our, our strategy or our niche is in connecting you or cultivating your online relationships, making those connections and then bringing them offline in the real world. So I've got four rules today. Some of you know this game, so you can't cheat. But I've got four rules. Rule number one, let's have fun. Number two, I'll give you 100%. Number three, let's be very interactive. And number four, this is the most important one. Number four, you promise that you'll take action. Is that a deal? OK. So I've got a test, if I can find one. This is. Uh, this is a $20 bill. How much? $20. <laughs> Good question. I see somebody reaching in their pocket already. So if you'll give me a dollar, I'll exchange this $20 bill. Do, do, do. Oh, you got to come up here and give it to me. <laughs> Money loves speed. There you go. Seriously? Thank you. <laughs> Let's give her a hand. What's your name? Paula. Paula. Thank you, Paula. So here's why we did this. A lot of times we see an opportunity, we hear about it, and we go, is that for real? Right? That's what some of you were thinking. Is he really going to give me a, a $20 bill for $1? You know? And we hesitate. Or we think, oh, it must be too good to be true. Or we sit back and we analyze it. Or we go, you know what? That is a good deal. And you don't do anything. But success always rewards the people who take immediate action. And like we always say, money loves speed. So Paula got right up came up here and she took the opportunity. And so I'm asking you guys and challenging you that today, the information that you learn, go home and use it. I'm going to give you some information that you can use on your own without charge. Use it. And those of you that want to retain us as a done for you service, that option is there as well. But either way it goes, you will have the information to take action and really begin increasing the value of your network and increasing the value of your leads. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. Where's my clicker? Here we go. All right, let's go forward. So I have a question. Can one connection triple your income? One connection on LinkedIn? Yes. yes. Okay. Good answer. This is Dr. Aaron Oxel. Um, Aaron is here in Reno. Some of you that are local know who Aaron is. So Aaron is a psychologist. She teaches peak performance. She actually coaches a lot of real estate agents on peak performance. Aaron met one lady on social media, on LinkedIn. That one relationship got her a referral and now, Erin is a best-selling author. She was named Top Saleswoman of the Year in the state of Nevada for 2019. And she 10X'd her income in one single year. All of that came from a single relationship on LinkedIn. <laughs> so, I say that to impress the idea upon you or the understanding that LinkedIn is the sleeping giant. I'm gonna give you some stats in a minute about LinkedIn because oftentimes when we think of social media, we're thinking of Facebook. But for business people, LinkedIn is where it's at today, okay? Now, Erin, before LinkedIn, she would do things the old way. You know, um, I'm gonna show you guys the difference between the old way and how you should be doing it today. How many of you guys want the new way? Okay, good, good audience. So before I give you the new way, here's the old way. 
Now the reason I'm showing you this is so that you can see the difference. So that you can see where you are today, what are you doing today, and you can make the distinguishment between the old way and what's effective. So here's the old way. You get a real estate license or you get into a new business and you rely on these people. Girls. Friends and family, that can only last so long, right? Okay? After that, pay-per-click ads. Pay-per-click ads work. They're effective, but they're costly. When you're in a really competitive industry like you guys are, pay-per-click ads can be very costly, right? How many of you guys have run PPC ads? Exactly, right. So it can be costly. BNI meetings, John James does not wake up at 6 a.m. to go to breakfast on Wednesday. <laughs> Doesn't happen. Now you might like to do that, you know, no offense if that's what you're into, but there's an easier way, okay? And then cold calling. Cold calling does work. I have a friend, we've been friends for 20 years. I mean, the guy, he's a machine. But there's an easier way. There's an easier way. So let's look at what that is. Our system leverages what's called social selling. Social selling. How many of you know what social selling is? Okay, social selling is basically when you go online, whatever social media platform you use, we suggest LinkedIn, and you target your prospect, you send them information that is useful to them, okay? And you send follow-up messages. And ultimately, what you should be doing is you should be engaging your prospects in the real world. You should be cultivating relationships with your prospects in the real world especially if they are sources of referral, okay? So that's what social selling is. Now the tool that we like to use is LinkedIn. Here's why. LinkedIn now has over 553 million users. It is the sleeping giant in the social media world. If you're looking to do business, I, I'm not talking about, you know, commenting on some cute baby photos or, or cat videos, which is fine, but if you're looking to actually do business, it's taking place on LinkedIn. 80% of B2B leads are originating off of LinkedIn. 41% of millionaires are on LinkedIn. All of your top decision makers, this is the platform, this is where they are. Okay, so this is why this is our tool of choice for social selling. Make sense? Okay. So there are three steps to building unstoppable leads. I'd like you guys to write these down. They're simple steps, but they're very powerful. Very powerful. Step number one, position yourself as an influencer. Position yourself as an influencer. Step two, cultivate relationships. And then step three, targeted lead generation. Okay, not just regular lead generation, targeted. The reason Randy has such great success in her program is because the leads are targeted. I'm gonna elaborate about these in just a couple of minutes. Still writing? Okay. I love it. I love note takers. So step number one, position yourself as an influencer. One of the fastest ways to do this is to write an article and post the article in LinkedIn News. All of you can do this for free. LinkedIn now allows you to publish articles for free in LinkedIn News. When you do that, your connections, everyone inside of your LinkedIn network, is going to get a notification, it's going to say, Paula was featured in the news. Randy was featured in the news. Now every single time this happens, month after month after month, what is happening is your connections are saying, oh, you know what? Paula's an authority on her subject. She's not just a regular agent. She is an authority. Does this make sense? Okay. The other thing you want to do is make sure you have a client-facing LinkedIn profile. 
So your summary on LinkedIn should be about the client and what you can do for them. That's what we, me we mean by a client-facing profile. Your headline message, which is the message that appears right underneath your photo on LinkedIn. It should say how you help someone. So we have a client, his name is Jock. Jock's down in Carson City. And he's a real estate agent. Jock's headline message is, I help engineers buy property. So he's targeting engineers. It doesn't mean he's excluding the rest of the market. It doesn't mean he's losing any business. But it means by hyper-targeting one market, he's gonna really stand out. Now we have a factory here in Reno, the Tesla factory. It's a big deal here. There, there's thousands of engineers sleeping at the um, Whitney Peak Hotel downtown. Okay, they can't find housing fast enough. Guess who they call? They all call Jock. He's an engineer, they're an engineer. He's using what we call the power of affinity. Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. Targeted marketing. Now when we get together and we have a one-on-one -on -one discovery session, this is something that we uncover over the phone. How to establish your target market properly so that you guys can make some money with your social media audience. Make sense? Okay. The third thing you want to do is now this is a very, very big nugget right here. So you should write this down because we only actually share this one in our paid workshops. Create your leadership platform. What this means is that inside of LinkedIn, you can create a group. You can create a group. When you send a connection request to someone and it says, hi, my name is Danielle and I help stay-at-home moms get into real estate, just as an example. When they see that message and it says, I am the founder of XYZ Group, they now perceive you as an immediate person of influence. Does this make sense? Yes. Okay. They perceive you as a person with immediate influence. Now, they don't perceive you as a realtor who just wants to sell them something. They don't perceive you as a salesman who's trying to hustle them for something. They're going, oh, this person is the founder of XYZ Group on LinkedIn. Does this make sense to you guys? Okay, please take 30 seconds, share with your neighbor. We just covered secret number one, positioning yourself as an authority. So you got 30 seconds, and then I'm gonna jump right back in with you. Don't be shy. You can just tell your neighbor what you've learned so far. 25 more seconds. Randy, what time do you have? I don't Thank you. No, it's eight minutes till four thirty. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, you guys learning? Is everybody ready for more? Yes. More, more, okay, more and more. more. I love it. I love it. Okay. So step number two, cultivate relationships. Cultivate relationships. This is a very, very big deal. This is really our secret sauce, and it separates those who do really well on LinkedIn versus those who do not. The key to the game is once you make the connection, you have to figure out how do you get that person to change the environment and meet with you in the real world? Now that meeting can be over the phone, it can be a video chat, it can be a one-on-one -on -one lunch, 
there are so many different ways to cultivate your network. I'm going to give you some examples in a minute, but start thinking about that. In fact, on your yellow sheet of paper and your pamphlets, there's a section in the middle where it talks about point B. If you get some ideas about how you want to meet people offline in the real world, please write it down in that section. That Forbes article that I, I wrote that I mentioned, it talks about this section right here. So let's look at this. How do you cultivate your relationships? You can go to coffee, you can video chat, you can hold dinner parties. In fact, somebody pick one of these and let me know which one you'd like me to elaborate on. Sexy salad. Wow. Wow. And they say sex sells. Jeez. I'm glad a woman said it. Because, you know, we're anyway. So, sexy salad. I was in Oakland and I did a sexy salad, right? So, the Oakland Impact Hub, the business owners, and you stand around this long, like, conference table. And the host provides the salad. All of the people that show up provide the fixings. The tomatoes, the cucumbers, the walnuts, the chicken, whatever it is. Everyone that shows up provides the fixings. And everyone kind of fixes the salad. They stand around and do a, a Native American prayer is the way they did it. But you can do whatever you want. And then you sit down and you break bread. Okay? If you're the host, you're the influencer. You control the game. You've got about two to three minutes in the beginning to talk about what you do. Everybody sits down and breaks bread. Okay? This is a very powerful way to cultivate your network in the real world. Make sense? No, why do they call it the sexy salad? I don't know why they call it the sexy salad, you know. Um, but it's sexy. It's different. I guess the more people that show up, the sexier the salad can get. So I have a question for you. How many of you guys are in a relationship or you've been in a relationship? Right? Almost everybody, I hope. Did that relationship, what was the first date? Anybody remember? Coffee? coffee. Dinner? Most first dates are coffee or dinner, right? So consider the value of your professional relationships. You should be doing the same thing. Think about it. You should be doing the same thing with your professional network. There's a guy, Ryan Levesque, he wrote a book called Ask. I know some of you have read the book. Very powerful methods as well. In the book, he tells the story of a young man who went to Stanford. Graduated. One year goes by. He couldn't find a job. He goes on to LinkedIn, and he starts messaging his network. And his messages went like this. Hey, I see we both went to Stanford. And I see that we both live in San Francisco. And so I'd like to get together for coffee to see how we can edify one another's network. Now, what he did is a technique that we use. I cover this with you in our strategy session. What he did was he established common ground. I see we both went to Stanford. And I see we both live in San Francisco. Okay? What happened over the course of one month or about five weeks, he got 25 people to have coffee with him. The 25 people that had coffee with him resulted in 85 job offers. Shouldn't you be doing the same thing in your business? Shouldn't you be having coffee with insurance agents, lawyers, business brokers, notary signing agents, people that can refer you business? Does this make sense? Okay, so cultivate your network. I can spend an hour on this, but I don't have time. We are having a workshop in the um, penthouse suite tomorrow. Jan and Lori will give you more details at the back table. In that workshop, we'll have a little bit more time to jump into some of the advanced concepts and ask questions and things like that, okay? Question. Ryan Levesque. Yes. So on your yellow sheet, 
write down what point B would be for you. Would it be coffee? Would it be dinner? Would it be seminars, webinars? What might it be for your business? Okay. Third section, targeted prospecting. So this is secret number three, targeted prospecting. Do you guys have Sales Navigator or have you heard of it? So Sales Navigator is something that you need to sign up for. I'll show you what it looks like in just a second. With Sales Navigator, you can do very advanced targeting. You can connect with people based on where they live, income level, occupation, etc. That is how you target people who can refer business to you. Okay, that's how you target the business brokers, the CPAs, the insurance agents, and all of the people that can do business with you. You can target real estate investors directly. There's so many different types of people that you can target through LinkedIn. So you want to identify the target market, use Sales Navigator for that. Send five to 12 follow-up messages. This is key. To cultivate your network properly and to get someone to agree to meet with you in the real world, you need to send about five to 12 messages. And I will show you what this sequence looks like. If you can't write all this down, that's fine. If you can, that's great. We cover this in our one-on-one -on -one sessions, okay? But this is a biggie. This is actually our framework that we use. It's very successful and I'm giving it to you. Because again, I want you to walk out of this session and be able to say, you know what, I learned something that I can use in my business today before I even leave the hotel. That's what I want for you. And if you want us to do it for you, of course we will. So first, the connection request. After that, send them a thank you. After that, send some information that you found online that might be useful to them. It could be an article, it can be a book, a video, you name it. It could be a case study. After that, send them an invitation to join your group. Your group is your leadership platform. So you want to invite people into your group. Then you be your calls to action. Coffee, tea, dinner, movie night, dinner parties, whatever the case may be. That's when you start the calls to action. You have to spread these messages out about three weeks apart in order to have maximum engagement with your audience. Make sense? Yeah. Question. Can you use Hootsuite schedule all this? Post no. Yeah, Hootsuite won't do uh, private messaging. It'll do post for you, but not messaging. Okay? Now, we message on behalf of our clients 35 to 50 connections every day. Close to 1,000 a month. We inbox, it's manual. They literally inbox to the other person's email. That's why Randy's gone from 2,000 to 8,000. Make sense? I'm actually glad you're, you're there because when you say that to people, they go, do you really inbox 1,000? Yes, we do. 30 to 50 a day, okay? So I'm gonna stop here and summarize uh, what we've covered so far. And I'll invite you guys to schedule an appointment. You can fill out your yellow sheets if you'd like a free consultation. This consultation is actually worth some money. I'm gonna show you what you get inside of it. We usually charge, it's not just a conversation. You're literally going to have a blueprint for your business. Okay, so let me show you um, what that is. First, I'll tell you, you've got two choices. If you want to turn in your yellow, your yellow sheets of paper for the free consultation, what's going to happen is I will create, or someone on my staff, we will create a lead generation blueprint for LinkedIn. You can take it home and you can use it yourself. Or you can have us do it for you, okay? But we'll build it out for you. Your second option is tomorrow you can come to the penthouse suite and this hotel, and we can kind of kick back. It's a little bit less formal. Have some, and you can answer all the questions, and we might do a sexy salad, okay? Okay.
Here's what happens inside of your discovery session. It takes about an hour on the phone, our initial talk. We're going to do a profile makeover and recommend headshots, background images. A lot of times we need to change background images for almost everybody. If you have the basic blue in the background, you're failing. How many of you have it? Don't answer that. But we want the background image on LinkedIn to speak to your authority. And so we'll work on that with you. After that, we identify your target market. We're going to go into Sales Navigator and really start to, to grind down who we can connect you with at, at the granular, granular level, you know, um, based on income, job title, location, et cetera. From there, we plan your cultivation strategy. Hopefully, on your yellow sheets, you have written down how you want to cultivate. We need that info because we're going to study your market and your profile before we ever get on the phone with you. From there, we will brainstorm some names of your group, your leadership platform on LinkedIn. Can you see how this is valuable? It's not like the normal, oh, it's a free consultation. No, it's not just that. It's a plan. It's literally a plan. It's literally a blueprint. From there, we create an outline for a seven-part multi-touch point campaign on LinkedIn to A, connect you with the target audience and drive them to point B, which is you cultivating them in the real world. And then finally, we brainstorm some article topics to plan out your editorial calendar. Make sense? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for, for being here. And I look forward to seeing you guys soon. Thank you. Can you hear me now? Okay. I think this might make me too loud, though, because my voice just travels. How's everyone doing? So thank you for coming. I'm so honored and grateful and excited to be here today. I'm glad all of you have come out on Friday. You know, this is the way we can start the week off, talking about making money, right? Okay, so today we're going to be talking about how to create strategic alliances to grow your company. And the benefit, the benefit of strategic alliances is that it will enable you to expand your business and expand your customer base 10 times for less than 10 times the investment. How does that sound? Okay. okay. So at the end of my short talk, I'm gonna talk for about 30, maybe 35 minutes. At the end of that, we're gonna have some Q&A. And during that time, you guys will be able to go to the back tables. Kelly and Brandon will be back there and you can set some, a one-on-one -on -one appointment so we can get together on the phone or in person and have a discovery session to talk about your business. Does that sound good? Yes. All right, so let's get going. Oh, but before we do, if you have cell phones, pagers, I'm dating myself, <laughs> anything that chirps or burps, please put it on vibrate and um, until the end. That way, you know, we can have about a good 30, 35 minutes. We can all lean in and get the most value out of this, okay? So let's take a look at our agenda. I'm gonna give you some information on our company, our background. We're gonna talk about the power of proximity. I love talking about proximity. It's a very powerful, um, very powerful mentality that you should operate through. We're gonna talk about how big businesses are leveraging strategic alliances and how you as a small business owner, you should be and you need to be doing the same thing, okay? After that, we're gonna get into what we call the most powerful law of nature in any business. And this is really exciting. I hope you guys take some notes. I will be asking you to write some things down. I might even ask you to talk to your neighbors. Might even ask you to move around a little bit today. Is that all right? Okay, do I have your permission to ask you to do that? Yes. Okay. We're gonna talk about what we call the marketing trifecta which are the three things that you need to be doing on a marketing level to grow your companies. And then finally, um, I'll invite you guys to meet with Kelly or myself one-on-one -on -one to have a discovery session 
to see how these things will grow your business specifically. Is that cool? Yeah. All right. So that's my new book. It's coming out for release in January, Big Business, Small Business. The Small Business Owners Online Playbook to Fight Back Against Big Brand Companies. So what I've been doing this last year is I've been going to big companies. Some of them are my clients. Others I just show up and visit, like at the Barnes & Noble's warehouse with a video camera. And I want to see their systems in play and ask them questions and look at the different things that they do to build empires and how those things can be applied at the local level for small businesses. One of those strategies we're gonna to cover today, just one of them, okay? It takes, it takes an hour just to cover one single strategy as it is, okay? So we're gonna only go into detail about one of them. I'm a member of the Reno Chamber of Commerce, also the Silicon Valley Chamber of Commerce. As Brandon mentioned, we have an office in San Francisco on Market Street as well. So I'm, I'm pretty active in San Francisco, uh, in the Silicon Valley Chamber and becoming active here in Reno. I also have a niche search engine. We partner with Yahoo to build the search engine. Bless you. Uh, we partner with Yahoo to build the search engine. I'm gonna tell you some details about that in a minute. Um, it's a pretty niche engine designed to uh, help minority businesses grow in various communities. And as Brandon mentioned, I've been featured on ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox. Um, I think you have a handout today from the Huffington Post. And I also contribute on a regular basis to Stanford News for their news articles as well as their blog. And more, but you know what, whatever. <laughs> okay, so I have four happy rules. Happy rules, Virgil. Happy rules, Virgil. Four happy rules for the day. Rule number one, let's have fun. Number two, I promise to give you 100%. And number three, three let's keep this interactive, and I'm asking you to give me 100% as well. Okay? And then last rule number four, you'll take action. Now, I meant to do something different today, but I'm going to have to do... I'm, I'm going to give you guys an action test. I'm going, to, I'm going to give you an action test. I actually meant to do something completely different. So if you ever see me do this, you're cheating, and I love cheating. <laughs> <laughs> this is a $20 bill, so there's Jackson on here, right? I got one Jackson in exchange for $1. You got a dollar, Joe? <laughs> you got a five? I'll take a five. Somebody's got to bring it up here, though. You know, somebody's got to take some action, run up here, and, and seize. There you go. He beat you, He sees the opportunity. Let's give Joe a hand. <laughs> so why do we do this? Why do we do this, Patrick? We do this because we want to be in the habit of seizing the moment. We want to be in the habit of seizing opportunity. My wife and I have a saying, it's a credo in our house. We live by this. If I talk about a good idea and I just talk, 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 and you know, there's a point when I know she wants me to stop talking, you know, she'll just go, well, what are you gonna do? You know? And the saying that we have, the credo that we go by is money loves speed. Money loves speed. So if you have an idea or impulse inside of you and you don't act on it you can be very close to the opportunity but someone behind you who's taking action can pass you up so you gotta move so I have a question for you can one strategic yes <laughs> absolutely can one strategic business relationship make you rich? Who says yes? Absolutely. Well, my God, you guys are too smart there. I thought somebody would be like, no, nah, you can't get rich off one relationship. You know? And I don't mean marriage, even though that happens too. You know? But one business relationship can make you rich. I was recently in, in Los Angeles about two weeks ago, 
and it was very interesting. I was at um, Panera Bread. Do you know Panera Bread? Because they don't have them in Reno, do they? I didn't think so. I can't find them. Oh, perfect. Okay. Awesome. All right. We'll do coffee there. Perfect. So I was at Panera Bread in LA and I'm um, having lunch with a buddy of mine, Sheldon. And Sheldon's from Trinidad, you know, so he's, you know, he's like, John, man, man, come on, man. You got to meet this guy, man. You got to meet him. I need you to meet him. Everything you say, I, I'm so excited. You have to meet him. So I'm sitting there, I'm like, Sheldon, okay, I'll meet the guy but I'm only here for two more days. I don't know if I can squeeze it in, you know? And so he keeps talking about this guy. And we're sitting there on this, um, next to the parking lot or the sidewalk, little sidewalk cafe. And this Aster Martin drives by and he's like, oh my God, that's him. I'm like, dude, are you sure? And so he calls him and like a hundred yards out or whatever, the car stops. Guy backs up, he comes, he sits down. Uh, well, first he sat down like over there away from us for 30 minutes, wrapped up some business, joined us for lunch. We had about a 14 minute conversation. I'm very digital, so I don't approximate numbers, I'm sorry. <laughs> but we had about a 14 minute conversation. And in that short, in that short time, he learned about what I had done. Sheldon already told him a little bit about me. And the next two days later, um, Monday, I think that was Friday or Saturday, Monday, this guy refers me a client, right? He refers a mayor. And the mayor is like, absolutely, um, you know, our office has, has, has vetted you. Well, this was about a week later. And we're going to roll. We, we want you to do some stuff for us. I said, okay. Then he refers another mayor. This one is the mayor of Inglewood. And, you know, in Inglewood, who did they just get at the... Uh, they're rebuilding the forum where the Lakers used to be, and they're getting what the, the LA Chargers. Chargers and Rams, right? Chargers. Chargers and a second team, right? It's the Rams. It's the Rams. Absolutely. Chargers and the Rams. Yeah, so they're getting the Chargers and the Rams, but he refers to Mayor of Inglewood. And I'm like, my God, you know. Uh, then he calls me regarding our niche search engine, and he goes, hey, I just want you to know, um, shoot me something over in writing because I'm sitting down tomorrow um, with someone who would want to partner up with your engine, or at least do something on the charitable cause side. I said, okay, well, who is it? He said, oh, it's just Steve Jobs' wife. <laughs> I I'm like, oh, okay. Like, Steve Jobs? He's like, yeah, you know, Apple, Steve Jobs, it's his wife. I said, all right, well, cool, you know. And so he sat down with her yesterday, and we have a, a tentative appointment for when we are in LA like next week. Why do I bring this up? One relationship. One relationship, 14 minutes. Absolutely ridiculous. I can give you a million stories, well, dozens of stories like this that I have experienced and dozens that my clients have experienced also, and my colleagues, okay? That's just the first one that comes to mind today. The point is, I asked, a, I asked an old man one day, we call him Old Man Jim. Hi, Mike. Mike's a young man. Mike does TM meditation. If you've ever wanted to learn TM, this is our guy for TM in Reno, okay? So I asked an older guy one day, Jim, he was a mentor of mine, I said, Jim, what, what can you tell me about making money? What can you tell me about becoming a wealthy person? Like, what's the one thing, you know, I said, Jim, if you were going to die today, what would be the one thing, you know? And he looked at me, we called him uh, the Velvet Fog because he had like this, this smooth voice, you know? And he looked at me, he said, young man, proximity. And I'm like, proximity? What? And he said, proximity. He said, if you place yourself in proximity to the right people, places and events, you can attract wealth to you. Just by nature of being aligned with the right people, that alone can literally change your life. And you have to make that a part of your thinking 
if you're ever going to attain any kind of wealth. And so my proximity to Sheldon at Panera Bread led to George, who's a lobbyist and a serious serial entrepreneur. And that has now led to an upcoming meeting with Steve Jobs' wife. Proximity. Does this make sense? Okay. Please turn and share the power of proximity with your neighbor for about 30 seconds, and then we're going to keep going. <laughs> Ready to roll? All right, we're rolling. We're rolling. So, so proximity, proximity is nearness, nearness and nearness in space, time, and relationship. So all of you are now in proximity to one another. And I humbly ask you to talk to one another today because who knows what can come from who you are in proximity with today. Does this make sense? Okay. So I would like you to get value out of this workshop today as many ways as you can. Okay? So can one relationship make you rich? Let's look at what the big businesses do. Take a look at this slide here and just, you know, tell me, what do these photos have in common? Subway is next to Starbucks, right? So we have four different locations here. Uh, upper left-hand corner, right, all four. We see this right here in Reno. We've got um, over on Prater or Prater, depending on what part of the country you are from, how you pronounce it. There is a Subway Starbucks there, right? We've got over on Rob Drive, Subway Starbucks, right next to each other, off Rob and uh, Mayan, yes, okay. And there's, is there another one? No, Charlotte's. Charlotte's, okay. And so we see this all over. I shot a video for the seminar, and we were in front of Subway uh, right, right there in the city, right in San Francisco, but all over the country. In fact, the reason these guys have, are doing this, they know what they're doing, okay? They know what they're doing. They are leveraging a very hidden force in business, a very hidden force in business to create traffic. And I'm gonna tell you what this force is. We call it market gravity. Please write that down. Market gravity, it's important. You have to start thinking inside of this paradigm, market gravity. Now, Newton, pretty smart guy, Newton said that gravity is a force of attraction that pulls object, objects in the universe closer together. A force of gravity that pulls objects in the universe closer together. That's what Newton said. Einstein came along a little bit later, right? He was pretty smart. Einstein said, well, actually, it's all about the, the, the density. Gravity will bend itself around mass, dense mass, okay? In business, we have a law of nature in business. Big businesses are doing this every single day. And small companies, they're just not. In business, we have market gravity. It's a force of attraction that pulls tribes of customers together. This is why you see Subway, 
and Starbucks next to each other all over the world. This is why you see this. They are leveraging market gravity. Does this make sense to you? Who's got more chains, Subway or McDonald's? McDonald's, right? <coughs> Subway. They passed them. Who would have thunk it? Who would have ever thought Subway would surpass McDonald's? And I mean, they surpassed them. Because Subway leveraged market gravity. That's what Subway does. Okay? This is why you see U.S. Bank inside of grocery stores. They're leveraging market gravity. This is happening with big businesses all the time. How come you aren't doing it? Didn't know about it. Would you like to learn how to do it for your own company? Would you like to learn that? Okay. So here's the old way. The old way is you build a website. After you build it, you market yourself alone. And after you market yourself alone, you try to go head to head with big companies. Do it solo. It can work and you can get results doing that, but there is a better way to do it. And there is a more cost effective way that you can do it also. Would you like to know the new way? Okay. So here's a new way. New way is you build what we call a strategic alliance website. Once you have a strategic alliance website, it basically means that you are on one website with a non-competing business who shares your customer base. You're on one website with a non-competing business who shares your customer base. Please explain that to your neighbors super quick. Super quick. Strategic alliances are formed by having non-competing businesses on one website. The, the thing that's important is that you guys share a customer base. Now I'll give you a super quick example. Any commercial realtors in here? One, two, okay. Commercial real estate. Patrick, who is your ideal customer? Uh, office retail client. Office retail client, okay. So a business owner. Okay, are there any, is there anyone in here that sells business insurance? Okay, you sell business insurance. Yeah, actually, well, some business have disability insurance for employees. That's very interesting. What is your name? Robbie. Robbie. Robbie? Robert. Robert, okay. So Patrick and Robert just happen to be in proximity. Both of them have clients that are the business clients. You see? Now, we have a commercial realtor, one person selling business insurance. Are there any attorneys in the room who do corporate formation? Anyone have a notary? We got a notary, okay? So that's three. So back there, we are starting to see density in the marketplace. So if these companies were positioned in the market nearby one another, they have market gravity. Does this make sense? Okay. So we could have a lawyer who forms corporation, a realtor who specializes in commercial real estate, his target market is business owners, a notary whose target market is business owners. We can throw a couple more in there. Okay. And those five people Instead of just having a physical business next to each other, they could do something far more powerful and create a strategic alliance website where they are featured on one website together. Does this make sense? 
okay? This is the power of market gravity. And in a few minutes, I'm gonna show you how to leverage the market gravity through a process that is called market gravity optimization. But so far, does this make sense? Okay, I'm gonna ask you to do something for 90 seconds. 90 seconds, just a little work in the workshop. 90 seconds. Please write down who your ideal customer is. 90 seconds. stressed out and need to meditate. 10 more seconds. Okay, perfect. Here, I need three. Boom. Yes. Oh, you want to hear? Please. Interesting. Interesting. Right. Absolutely. Very good. What's your name? Benny. Benny. Thank you, Benny. So you're targeting business owners as well who, who are affluent. Okay, so there's more market density. Okay. Uh, one more. Yes. to a real estate agent. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> So, cool, a lot of people are taking action today, I love it. Is it because it's Friday? Okay, so this is the power of proximity, and we put you guys on one strategic alliance website. We don't crowd the site. Often, oftentimes, a site like this would have about five, no more than 10 companies. But on average, five if it's in the service business, you know, in the service industry, consulting. You know, uh, Jen, you're an author. Jen, can I tell some of your personal business? You can tell whatever you want. Okay. Jen, <laughs> Jen's fascinating. Um, when I met Jen, I actually thought about her for like 24 hours. Well, I get it. Right? Right? It's not because she's pretty. 
okay? Jen told me a very fascinating, some fascinating things about herself. You are beautiful, but, okay. but that's not the reason, okay? What it is is, when one, she's got like a bunch of kids. I have 13, I have 17, but 13 are legal Whoa. residents, and I think that's a hilarious way to say it. They have five papers on them. Yes. But they're 17 total. Yeah. So, you know, we were talking, and, and she goes, yeah, you know, She's looking at her phone, yeah, it takes a village, right? She, she has one. So she goes, she's like, oh, yeah, 13. And, and I'm looking at her on her phone, and I'm like, oh, well, you know, dogs and cats. I mean, what are you, you know, what are we talking about? You know, she's like, oh, kids, and then the dogs, you know? And so, but she's an author, and as an author, she targets entrepreneurs like you do, okay? And she also targets women, a category that you fit in from the stories that you've told me. And so she can help you create books, okay? So there's, there's about 50 different ways right here in this room. I encourage every single person in this room, if you own a business, if you are a consultant, especially a high ticket consultant, okay? Or any enterprise you own, at the end of today's short talk, I'm gonna talk just for about 15 more minutes. Set up an appointment with Kelly or Brandon have your discovery session because some power is going to come from that. And I'm going to offer you some opportunity that exists today and only today because that is my reward to you guys because you took action and came out here today. Does this make sense? Okay. What do you do? Um, I, I have a, several businesses. Are you involved with QuickBooks? So tell me one of your businesses, if it's okay for me to ask. Sure, um, I own uh, Yoga Pod Reno, yoga studio in nice. Los Angeles. Yes, Yay. wonderful. All right, I'll be there tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was my, my instinct to ask you the question. I'll be there tomorrow. Okay, let's keep going. So once you're on the Strategic Alliance website, you're aligned with a non-competing business that shares your customer base, that's the key. Now you're in a position to gain 10 times the market exposure for less than 10 times the investment, okay? Now we got some of the technical stuff coming up here. Market gravity optimization. First, you identify your tribes, your customers. We've already done that. Once you identify who your tribes of customers are, the next thing that you have to do is number two. You've gotta form your strategic alliances. Now, the, 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 the good thing is, this works. The downside to it is, you gotta work it. Like, you gotta go out and form strategic alliances, okay? The beauty is, what our company does is, we go out and we create the strategic alliances for you. Is that cool? Is that beneficial? Okay, that takes a lot of the work out of the process for you. After we identify non-competing businesses who share your customer base, we put you guys on one website, and then the next step is we start to market the Strategic Alliance Funnel, okay? We start to market the funnel. The first thing we wanna do with this site, so I want you to use your imagination. You're on a site with four or five other people. You guys share the same customer base. Now we're gonna think about marketing the site. But before we market the site, we want to position you properly. We want to position you so that your business succeeds. Does anyone know what I mean by position? Yes? Yeah, you have to sure that you're in the right place at the right time to make that decision first. Making sure you're in the right place at the right time, that is part of it, yes. By positioning, we want to make sure that, I'll give you a, a Quick example. You've seen businesses that are featured on the news, right? ABC, you go across some websites as seen on TV, some say as seen in <coughs> Wall Street Journal. Those businesses that have those logos on their website, their conversions are 318% higher than businesses that don't have that. Does this make sense? St statistical fact. Plenty of case studies around this. Their conversion, so in other words, if I come to your site and you don't have any media authority, I might leave. 
I might stay. But if I come to your site and it says, you've been featured on major media, you've been featured on ABC, CBS, Fox, 318% more people will take some kind of action to either ask you for an appointment, opt into your email list, or purchase your product or service. Does this make sense? Please share this with your neighbor real quick. We're gonna move on. Position, tell them what positioning is. T-minus 14 minutes. T-minus 14 minutes to Q&A. I just need you to like push the brain for 14 more minutes. Okay? Question? Okay, any, any comments about positioning? We teach a different workshop on this, but this is a real big deal. Because every day, entrepreneurs, they start marketing their business before their position. And that's why their sites don't convert. Okay, that's another strategy leveraged by big corporations. They understand the value of positioning. You know, they pay guys like me to come in and just position them across the board monthly because they know that it works. So what we're gonna do is when you are inside of one of our Strategic Alliance websites, we're gonna position your business in major media every month. How does that sound? Does that sound cool? Okay. As you can see, we have a relationship with USA Today. That's just one of them. That's Brandon in the back row. Okay. All right, so when you're positioned in the media, so many different ways to leverage this. Put the logo credentials on your website, your business cards, your flyers, especially if you're a realtor, you're meeting with someone for a listing, you give them your articles. You're an author, you have to do it. You coach authors, you don't have a choice but to do it, okay? If you're in commercial real estate, it's a must. That's how you separate yourself from everybody else. It doesn't matter what business you're in, you've gotta be positioned properly. Does this make sense? Okay. Are you guys learning anything? So this is uh, Garrett Sutton, he's local. Some of you know Garrett. He's a local business attorney, client of ours. <clears throat> you guys know the book Rich Dad Poor Dad, right? Garrett's a rich dad advisor. Gar oh. Garrett's a rich dad advisor. Uh, so he's part of the Rich Dad series of, of, uh, of books. And this is a slide from him talking about our service. In fact, there's a video that we have on YouTube and you'll hear Gary talking about his experience with us, okay? <clears throat> All right, after your position in major media, so you're on a strategic alliance site with non-competing owners who share a what? Similar customer base, okay? Now we, now we have positioned you in major media. The next step, is we want to do SEO. We want to search engine optimize the site. Now, SEO, to be effective, companies usually pay about $2,000 a month to be like really effective at SEO. You can pay less if you're in an industry that is not as competitive, but SEO is basically the process of getting your business to page one of Google. What's SEO? Okay, you guys are awake, cool. So it's the process of getting your business to page one of Google. Now, why would you want to do this? 80% of the traffic 
online goes to businesses that are on page one of Google, over 80%. So let's say someone Googles the term, how to write a book, okay? And that term might be Googled 80,000 times a month nationwide. But if you live in an area like San Francisco, they might look it up 40,000 times a month or 30,000 times a month. What's 80% of 30,000? 24,000. That's 24,000 potential eyeballs on your company just from being on page one of Google. Does this make sense to you guys? Okay. Would it be beneficial for your company to be on page one of Google. The challenge is, some people have $2,000 a month and some don't. That's the challenge. The beauty of creating a strategic alliance website and being in proximity with non-competing businesses who share your customer base, the beauty of this is your marketing expense can fall two, three, four, five, eight fold. Make sense? Because everyone's participating. How's that sound? Okay. Okay, this is another client of ours, Skydive Trekkie. Very, I was supposed to jump out of the plane, but something happened and I had to postpone it. <laughs> I can't remember what it was, but it was a legitimate excuse. Um, Kelly, what, did, did, did I leave or something? No, it was just an excuse. Oh, okay. But it was a good one. Yes, it was a good one. And now I have to wait until the weather warms up, you know? So. Okay, so finally, we get to social media optimization. The, the three things that you really want to have going for your marketing, A, you want to be positioned, B, you want your social media optimization, and your SEO. You want to have all three working for you. When you have all three, including the return path, you, ha you have what we call the marketing trifecta. Okay, The marketing trifecta, SEO, search engine optimization, social media, and creating a return path, which I'm going to explain in a minute. That's the marketing trifecta. You want to have all three working in your business. Absolutely. What's the first one? SEO. That's getting on page one of Google. What's the second one? Social media, what's the third one? A return path. A return path means when someone hits your site, you need to have systems and processes in place that bring them back to your site over and over again. We build the return path for you. We, we do it through email, okay? We do it through remarketing on social media and many other ways. I'll show you the return path in a minute. Uh, this is another client of ours, Janie Sharp. They are the top 1% of Coldwell Banker worldwide. And she loves our services, but we, we, we love her too. Awesome team of gals, six women up there in Truckee, and I mean, they're doing it. Uh, you walk in there, you feel the energy in that office. Powerful stuff, you know. So we have a, a, um, we have a deal in play right now, another project that we're working on with them. Do you know Surf Air? They're, they do private charter flights. You pay them like, what is it, 4,500 bucks a month? 25 to 4,500 bucks a it's month. It's 1,800. 18 to 4,500. Yep. You can fly unlimited back and forth. And uh, we're doing a co-marketing deal. I can't speak too much on it. But we're doing a co-marketing deal between Surf Air, the Sharp Team, and a few other businesses who are all targeting an affluent market. I'm telling you, this stuff's powerful. It's so freaking powerful. You have to have this in your business. When you have your discovery session, we'll get together on the phone or we'll get together in person, and then we'll jump into some of the meat of this. Okay, the last step, step seven, you create a return path, which I already talked about. Email, social media, you know, someone hits a site, they leave, our ads follow them around on social media, kind of stop them for a little while and bring them back, okay? We have to do that because that's gonna increase your return on investment. All right, so we're, we're pretty, pretty much near the end. 
How's this been so far? Did you guys at least learn something? Yes. Okay, did you meet some cool people? Yes. So we've covered a lot this past hour, and it's been an hour almost. Covered a lot. We talked about the power of proximity. I encourage you to make proximity a part of your thinking from this day forward. It'll change the things that happen to you. We talked about the secret concept or the hidden concept of market gravity. We've covered the market gravity optimization process. Okay, those are the seven steps. Identify your target customer. What was the last time you guys took out a piece of paper and wrote down who your target customer was? How many haven't done it like in a long time? Maybe never. Okay, I'll tell you, I hear the law of attraction a lot, you know, but the first step to attracting anything is you take an idea and you add mass to the idea. You add mass to the idea when you write it down. And then you start to attract those customers into your life and into your business. Just writing that down today, it activates an invisible force in the universe that starts to bring those customers near you. Just like you guys took action and showed up and you found yourself in proximity to so many people who can help you and you didn't even know they were there. So I, what I'd like to do, I don't have time to go into every, you know, all the details of market gravity optimization. What I'd like to do is present an offer to you guys, um, an offer that we don't normally give to people, but it's because you guys showed up here today. Is that okay? Are you sure? No. Okay. Now, when I talk about an offer, I know people are like, uh-oh, I got to spend some money, you know? But you really don't spend money, it circulates, right? Money is a very disposable, fungible thing. Most people get a paycheck every couple weeks, or you get new clients that are paying you monthly, et cetera, et cetera. But money is disposable. We go to Starbucks, we go to the movies, but it, it replenishes itself, okay? So don't think in terms of you're spending money on your business, you can't do that. If you really have a business and you're serious about it, all the money that goes into it is an investment. So here's what's included in our service. We start at the top with the discovery session. So we would need to get together on the phone or in person and do some discovery. We need to talk about your business. We need to talk about your ideal clients or your ideal customer. We need to talk about what's not working in your company and see how we can do it better, okay? Now when we do that, the next thing that we do is we take that information and we start finding your tribe. Now that's work. This is one of the reasons a lot of digital firms don't do this unless they're doing it for big companies because there is work involved. We've got to go out and find your tribe and put you guys in alignment on one strategic alliance website. Does this make sense so far? Okay. Then we go through the ideation process where we start to look at what are the offers gonna be? You know, are we just listing you guys separately? Is there gonna be a joint offer that we put together, like the one coming together with the Sharp team, Surf Air, and the other affluent companies? So we go through the ideation process. This takes time, it takes time. Once it's all done, then we build your site. Now you're on a website and you're on a site with non-competing businesses who share your customer base with, with very powerful offers on the site. How does this sound? Is it clear or does it make sense? Now so far, the value of what I've described so far Well, one of these is a pointer. There we go. The value of what I've described, the discovery session, finding your tribe, ideation, and building a site, is that worth more than five grand? Is it? I'm not, I'm not asking you to have it, but is it worth it? Is it? Yes, it is, of course. Okay, It's worth that for your business. 
Now we continue with, after the site is built, we position it in the news. That means your company, your service is gonna be featured in major media. That means that when you sit down with a client, your conversions are going to increase by virtue of being featured in the media. Okay, I didn't bump into that, I didn't do that. Now when the site is built, we start the marketing trifecta. SEO, getting you to page one of Google, social media, and then creating your return path for email. We do it all for you. Now is it worth more than five grand? Yeah. Of course, of course. So what we're doing is we are rolling out an offer where instead of charging you guys five grand, because I'll tell you, right here in Reno, there are PR firms. One of them hates my guts, so sorry. Some of you know who. Anyway. And they charge you $5,000 a monthly retainer to get you featured in the news. They do. People pay it because it's worth it. Part of our service, you're gonna be on a Strategic Alliance website, featured in the news monthly, SEO monthly, social media optimization. You're on a site that causes people to come back and it's not gonna be five grand a month. How much should it be? Who said 500? I didn't hear what Brett said. <laughs> What's well, a $5,000 monthly value and you're close, $497 a month. He's on it. He's on it. He is on it, absolutely. We're gonna roll this out at $497 a month for those that are here, okay? Now, we're gonna take this one step further. Does this sound good so far? Does it sound fair and reasonable? Now, here's why we are allowed to do this. We're allowed to do this because when you guys come together and form what we call a cluster, that's the slang, the slang digital terminology we use, cluster. You form a cluster or a strategic alliance website, your marketing expense gets dropped because you're not going alone. But you have the power of 10 times that. You have the power of $5,000 in monthly marketing affecting your business. The reason Starbucks and Subway are right next to each other is because the same guy or gal who wants coffee then wants a, a six inch or a 12 inch, in my case, from Sub Subway. And so if we're doing all this marketing on a monthly basis, people are gonna read articles. The article's gonna mention a real estate agent and a notary. The article will mention a commercial real estate agent and an insurance person. The, the article will mention someone who's really good with social selling skills next to an author who's coaching people on how to write books. Make sense? So you're being optimized monthly, you're, but you're not having to pay the $5,000 a month because you guys have come together. If you guys wanna do this today, here's what we're gonna do today and today only. We're having this workshop again Wednesday. We're not rolling this out Wednesday. Not like this. So what we're gonna do is, if you wanna get started today, let's hand out the yellow forms and so I can walk everyone through this. If you wanna to start today, um, complete the yellow forms. You can go to the back table. They have some there as well, but they're being passed out. We're gonna do this for your first three months. We're gonna do $97 for your first three months. That's gonna cover your initial discovery session, okay, your discovery session. It will also cover us creating the prototype of the site. We're waiving a $1,900 fee in doing that. Yes. Got you. Okay, good question. A lot of that we'll cover in discovery. However, uh, one of your questions is, are you still gonna use your existing site? Absolutely. In fact, the articles that we create monthly, you're gonna get SEO juice 
from both sides. So the strategic alliance site that you're on is also gonna send juice to your existing website. And both of them start to climb in the search engine. So that's a darn good question. It's a thinking question too, thank you. Yes. That's a super good question too, okay? So it can take us 30 to 60 days, uh, turn time to get everything created. And Kelly at the back table will make appointments with you guys. It can take 30 to 60 days to get everything created. Um, that, that's the turn time. In that time frame. So we're doing it all in that time frame. We are asking you to refer two people because when you refer someone who's in alignment, it allows us to build the site for you, okay? Now, this offer for today is 97 for the first three months. Here's what happens after the first three months. If you guys wanna make referrals, you can opt into our affiliate program. Our affiliate program, uh, there's a $450 fee, we're waiving that today. When you opt into the affiliate program, if you refer someone into a strategic alliance site, it doesn't matter if they're on there with you or someone else. When you refer them, you're gonna receive a $100 monthly credit that you can apply towards your investment for your program. Does this make sense? Okay, so we're only doing that today, very limited time, because we want you guys to be able to take advantage of the information, take some action, and help your business grow without having to spend the usual two to $5,000 a month you know, to really dominate the market. So at the top of your form, I'll walk you through this. It says, yes, I, you can just put your name there. Yes, I'm certainly interested in growing my business exponentially right now. Please reserve my spot on a Strategic Alliance website. Once you put your name there, um, you understand that you're gonna enroll. It's gonna be $97 a month for the first three months. If you wanna cancel at any time, you can cancel. Not a problem, okay? After the three months, so this is like January 29th or so, your first thing on the 497 again. Did the battery run out? Yeah, the first, the first payment on the 497 would begin in January. Now the benefit to you is, in the meantime, we are having workshops. You can refer people.